I'm about to tell you a story. It has a beginning, a middle, and an end. Fact or fiction, doesn't matter. It's all how I tell it. We play at fulltiltpoker.com. Diego Cordovez. Adam Schoenfeld. The Scoop. Full Tilt Poker. We had Ray first with us last week, and uh, we're in the middle of uh, some important anecdotes. Scintillating conversation. And uh, we're going to continue with that. And uh, part one, in case you missed it, is on Card Player TV. And uh, we're going to keep going with Ray. Uh, what day did you play, Ray? I played yesterday. Oh, right. I saw you. Yeah. And uh, you're standing? Uh, 15,000, some odd, so. You're in. That's I'm in, and I feel you know the structure is fantastic. I have to say that they really nailed the structure. Mm -hmm. um, I felt like sort of any other year I, I might be out by now, and, and or you know I've gotten short and really been desperate, and you know. You have like half the starting stack, and you still have like what like forty big blinds or something like that. I, mean, I have like, twenty five. Yeah, like, right. Like a very yeah. playable. Yeah. Right. I mean, very I think playable. One Absolutely. of the things I noticed at the end of uh, you know the final level last night were was a bunch of people going broke that really didn't need to go broke. No. But, of course, this went out your experience, player, but people panic and they think yeah. they're short. And, yeah. yeah, they might be short compared to the chip yeah. leader or even short compared to average, which, as you've told me many right. times, average right. doesn't matter. Yeah. It's like you've got chips to play with, which I, I thought the structure was excellent <laughs> yeah. as well. I mean, I remember a few years ago in the main event, very early on, the guy got involved in a hand against Scotty Wynn. Yeah. And, you know, for people who don't know, I mean, certainly in the early parts of event Scotty's a very very tight player so yeah. this guy had raised made a little raise pre-flop and when a flush card came on the turn Scotty had gotten all of the chips in so it, it was hard for Scotty not to have a flush or something close to it but this guy had two aces with no redraw but he was very stubborn and he lost 8,000 of his 10,000 because Scotty didn't have him covered so now he has 2,000 this is the old days when he was still chip right. to chip so the blinds were 25 and 50. So he had 2,000 with 25, 50 blinds. And actually, in those days, in a $2,000 tournament, that was your starting stack. Right, right. You know, which you wouldn't go crazy. Yeah. And about three hands later, he just got it all in, and someone called him, and the board ran out, and I think there was like a king and a jack, and the other guy showed like an ace 10 and, and one, right. unimproved. Right, right. <laughs> this guy didn't have to show his hand. This is before you had to turn your cards That's over. Right. I thought, this is losing perspective where if you start the $2,000 tournament with 2000 you wouldn't even dream of getting all your chips in, but because he'd already lost the 8000 he didn't think of trying to come back. Yeah, in fact, uh, it, that, that's sort of the relative, I mean, you've been working all day, and it's, it is a little bit grueling, and you're concentrating. So it's, it's interesting the, the, the way the mind sort of plays various games with you uh, about, you know, w where you stand, and that you know, intimately affects your decision making process and you know, somebody told me uh, that uh, yesterday that a guy came to his table with like 90,000 and then like in a couple of hands blew down to 15,000. Mm -hmm. Now, I know for sure, that I asked him, it, it, but I know for sure that he got to 15,000 on the very last hand because when you go from, right. yeah, there's no way that he played without just going insane. That's the other big, after that, yeah. big fallacy that, that some people feel, I don't want to come back the next day short. Yeah. Yeah. And other people feel like, I really want to come back the next day no yeah. matter what, which right. are the two extremes. That's right. Where it's obviously this completely artificial thing. It's yeah. one tournament, yeah. but some people really want to stay right. the second day. Both of those ways so, of thinking it wrong. You know, there was one guy who, right. in this event, late, he, you know, where there weren't that many raises, he folded pocket kings face up, but he had like a, sh and he had a short stack, which makes it even more debatable. But he really was determined that I don't want to be knocked out the first day. Got to tell the guys at home. You and then the flip too. side is, you do see people with fifteen thousand. But fifteen thousand is a, a, a substantial very equity stack. Yeah. I mean, 
the, the year that I went really deep, after the first day I had 7,000, you know, and, but people say, I don't want to come in the next day, like, that's really a bother, even though I'm sacrificing potentially yeah. that was the hundreds of thousands one, of right? dollars of equity, <laughs> yes, exactly, <laughs> but they, they're like, I, I don't want to come back with a short stack, even though the blinds, like, barely are moving up, and so, you know, one thing I just wanted to just come to mind now, Rafe, you are a bracelet holder, as is Perry Friedman, yes. two of the prominent tilt boys. Right. Now, we had to edit this out, but when we had Phil Gordon on, <laughs> he was he wept because he had I, this. I understand. Yeah, that that, that Well you know you, you realize what was shaping up the other day. Uh, so Phil and I actually both uh, ended up at the final table for the first time together, but at the Anti Up for Africa event. Oh okay. now we talked about open events deserving a bracelet and right. whatnot. Open event, no bracelet. Right. Um, so we were faced with a situation, right? You know, you have this great sort of battle, right, between him and me, friendly rivalry, um, and uh, you know, he wants his first bracelet. I was just hoping if I didn't win, I was so hoping that Phil would win a World Series of Poker event, open event, and still not have a bracelet. <laughs> it was just too good to be true. I think it'd be extra frustrating, and then you're always kind of half explaining like, well yeah. I really did, but they, you know, yeah. that doesn't really work. <laughs> but that's interesting, right, in these gender limited and now next year when they, they announce the Jews only tournament, as right. I always talk about, they have bracelets. But they have the age limit the, the seniors around. Right, so. but uh, poor Phil, it, you know, if he'd won the NTF for Africa, that's funny. Actually, actually, I had never thought of that. What's the rationale for not having a bracelet there? I mean, in the sense that if they did have a bracelet, they'd really get a turnout. Well, that's a lot more defensible. To give a bracelet. That's, that's, really, that's a really good point. Uh, you know, I think it's just an historical accident. Up until this year, the structure of it and everything, it just wasn't. Uh, it was like a real. It wasn't, yeah, it just wasn't taken seriously and whatnot. Um, and I think, actually, to be honest, with the television coverage this year, mm -hmm. right, and it's one of the few uh, ESPN covered events this year, that really caused a good turnout, but not only that, a serious play from the field. And so. I mean, you saw the final table was like, you know, Hennigan who won it last year, mm -hmm. you know, five full tilt pros, uh, Jen Harmon, Chris Ferguson, mm -hmm. Phil, uh, I'm forgetting oh, I didn't somebody. Know. But yeah, they, by the way, they yeah, tried to escape they, uh, me because there's so many events. Eric Seidel, sorry. Oh really? Well, you know, part of it they What's really didn't, poker? they didn't publicize it that much, and part of it I think yeah. is because it's going to be on TV. They, they yeah. Right now, you just spo life. spoiler alert. That's all right. It is a yeah. spoiler. This is live, alert. isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Mm, Anne Ray first. Anne Ray first, yeah. So you could have won your second, in a sense. In a sense. I remember years ago when you were out, you were the first person out of the main event. Yeah. Which now, it's kind of lost. They it's, can't do it anymore with the, the multiple days. Right, they don't know, and there's 17 yes, different rooms I, I'm and proud. a restaurant. That's right. And you had this <laughs> like where you're walking out as people are walking in. Yeah. Correct? Uh, yeah. <laughs> I mean... <laughs> See, this is not to... You're gracious enough to come to the show. It's not to bring you down. And no, 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 no. I just, down. it's not. It's, it, I don't, well, no you, problem you, talking you about. You described it. the yeah. hand to me, and yeah. it didn't really sound to me like you had to go broke. I mean, if I may second guess. Yeah, absolutely. I, I think um, I, you know. I look, assumed it was, that you had like a full house because you know, this is like a minute. It was like the second, no, maybe the third main event I'd ever played, and. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, Rafe today probably would not have gone broke, especially against. I was playing against John Juanda in the big hand, and um, it was set over set. I had bottom set. It was ace queen ten flop, mm -hmm. rainbow, I believe, um, and or I'm not even sure. There might have been suits, but the, but the point is, I don't know. Just some. I just I thought I went into the tank and. Uh, I had him covered by a couple of thousand, and we talk about the value of a couple of thousand early on right, in the tournament. Right. I was like, well, look, I'm not busted. And if you're wrong, you're. I mean, this is this maybe also relates to a debate that people used to have, which is how, you know, how much are you willing to gamble early to double your stack? Yeah. And now I would argue that there's so many weak players yeah. that you don't want to gamble to double your stack because right. you can double your stack with a lot less risk. In those days, because this yeah. is not in the Johnny Moss era, but it was years before the right. crazy explosion of poker. There were a lot of good players, and if you could double your stack in the right. first five minutes, yeah. it was a huge advantage, yeah. and it wasn't necessarily going to be that easy to get right. to that chip level. Although, I mean, I'll play devil's art, you know, advocate on this one. Um, I agree with you, by the way, in general, but there is this sort of countervailing, you know, you know sort of dynamic that goes on, which is there are so many weak players, 
you're really only going to face them day one. Yeah. You know what I mean? They're going to go broke pretty quickly. A lot of them go broke the first level or two. Yeah. So um, you might you want to get their chips. And, and by the way, your table draw is important. Right? And John so Jawanda is one of those. Right. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> right. Exa well, here's the thing. Uh, don't tell this whole story. Let me tell the whole story. Okay, sorry, sorry. So I get to the table. I don't know anybody. There's two empty seats. You know, it goes around. I like, you know, I, I steal all the, all the blinds. And, uh, and then I was in heaven. And then John Jawanda and Lane Flax sit down in the empty seats. And I'm like... <laughs> of course, what do I do the very next day? I get involved, set over set with John. So, and then Lane busts me like a few hands later. So that's how it's eleven minutes. You're gracious to talk about that, but yeah, yeah. it doesn't matter because you're a world series poker champion now. You, See, if you. if that had been the whole story, then it'd be tough because it'd be very very rude. But a couple of years later, you win a bracelet. Right, we can make money for that because you're so a champion. So now we can kid around about it. Uh, we talked about briefly about well, we mentioned your bad beat on cancer. Yes. Flesh that out first because that's an important thing that you're involved with. Yeah. Well, so 2003 World Series of Poker. I think it was the very next year. I think, I, yes. Uh, yeah. I think, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, so actually it was my, the, the bust out was my second main event year. So, uh, 2003, uh, Phil and I were on this year long debaucherous road trip where we were going to sporting events like day after day after day, like a whole year on the road in an RV. Every single sport. Yeah. yeah. And we, um, we had hooked up with uh, the Prevent Cancer Foundation to raise money and awareness for them throughout the trip. And we had this charitable goal, $100,000. And um, so at the, at the main event, Phil came up with uh, this idea for just 1%. You, you don't even donate it. You pledge 1% right. if you're so lucky to win. It's not going to hurt at all. Right. And if you don't, well, at least you've done a good thing. You've worn the, the, you know, the patch and you've, um, you know, you've, you've done the right thing karmically. Mm -hmm. So it made a lot of sense and it sort of caught on like wildfire. I think we signed up like 10% of the field, including, you know, just about every big name right. that year. And um, so it just was one of those ideas that, you know, Phil, to his credit, you know, he's, he comes up with these things all the time and it just stuck. And, it's a grassroots thing, so I think that's important. It's not, you know, sort of top down, and um, poker players kind of have owned it as their grassroots initiative, um, and we've just kind of expanded from there. I mean, I've, pledged, of, I've pledged my one percent this year, and you've pledged one hundred percent since you were exited. Um, the post back to one hundred percent. It is one. Yeah. But now I feel comfortable going to one hundred. But uh, my, my one percent is still in play. Well, here here's an idea. I think I kind of I kind of like where this is going because uh, we can we can have a one hundred percent badge that we can give the <laughs> folks who bust out and it's going to raise awareness right that's actually a good idea all right we're going to do it right, right. You, you're going to wear it this year i'll wear it okay mind, of course First, until next year that just gives me a lead into bad beat stories and such which everybody wants i to told uh, phil gordon that you know i cashed last year and my one percent was not that big but still i actually felt very good about doing and it thank i you felt very good much. about signing it, 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 it's a good thing to it's do so i recommend that everyone who plays and the important thing is that you were on the board so it's not just a matter of passively sending money to an organization, but you're involved in... That's right. I remember you grilling me on learning. this fact earlier. Did I? Yeah, you, you were, you were, yeah, you were really interested. In, and I always appreciate when people do want to learn more because it is the case that, you know, sometimes it's a little bit opaque what, what charities do. And, you know, even charity poker these days has become a little bit of a business for, for certain right. operations. And so I always ask, you know, how much of the proceeds. It should be 100% of the proceeds you know, uh, goes to, you know, the charity and, um, you know, the organization, the organizer should make up their, um, you know, should, should make up their costs and fees from sponsors, corporate sponsors and whatnot. I so, uh, But the I fact that you're on the board means that right. you're... And then where the money goes. Goes. I was telling someone the other day, this is right. that because you and Phil are on the board, right. I feel super confident right. that the pass-through is among the highest in Mostly charity. Mostly right, but Phil also. Yeah, right. Phil's okay. But yeah, <laughs> and, and so I feel even doubly good about well, participating in this charitable endeavor. Yeah. yeah, I can guarantee you that it's a great organization. You can also read about it, very transparent on the web, so. Rafe, it's been a pleasure. We're gonna uh, wrap things up. Okay. But hopefully your 1% will be a large number in this uh, main event. I hope and so. I mean, and Adam, you and as Adam, well. Yeah. So when, when do you play? Uh, uh, Wednesday, I go back in at noon. Right, yes, my, as uh, do I. And you're at my, I assume 000. you're at my table? I hope so, because okay. I've got 94,000. I'm just going to be moving in on you a lot. Oh, congratulations. <laughs> that, is, that is a nice stack. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. But um, it's been a lot of fun. Thank and you, the Ray. fact that 
you have these various histories of poker, and, and also that you give a lot back with the uh, with your organization. Well, uh, you know, I really appreciate uh, you know being on. You guys are uh, some of the best, and I you know I go way back with you guys too. So let's go on for many funny. more. Like let's, the, talk, let's talk more, more about how good you guys are. Yeah, 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 it's all about you guys. And No, but seriously, uh, I, I do remember when you guys were commentating um, at, at Binion's, at Binion's yes. and you guys were by far the best, the funniest. It was, it was awesome. Well, so, thank you. I don't yeah. think they'd allow that anymore. No. But uh, we yeah. had such a limited audience that we could get away with that. I know, it was so. great. It was great. <laughs> well, thanks for joining us on The Scoop, brought to you by Full Tilt Poker. Write to us at The Scoop at Carpenter.com. I've seen just about everything. Seen queens overthrow kings and straights flushed away. I felt the sweat after every re-raise and nearly buckled after bad beats. Seen rags lead to riches and witnessed countless miracles on the river. So if you want to play, take a seat and show me something I haven't seen. We play at FullTiltPoker.com.